Good morning. Welcome to your father's, father's house this morning. We're glad that you all did nothing with your clocks last night. Nobody had to spring forward. We, we would love the extra hour of sleep, you know, but we're all glad that you're with us in our worship this morning. As we um, are on the month of March, our theme is Proverbs of the Paycheck. Last week we talked about work versus laziness. Now today we'll talk about planning um, God's will in our planning in our calendar. So let's do our uh, memory verse um, for the month of March. It's in inside your bulletin, Proverbs. And if you, um, and let's read that together. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. All right, let's do all the way to crops. Read that one line of yourself, the first two statements there, and then let's um, try to say it together. All right, you ready? Eyes up here. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of all your crops. Very good. In our worship today, if you have any prayer requests, um, please fill out those orange cards, put them in um, the offering plate so we can lift you up. I, we have two praise reports already I heard as you came in this morning, and so we thank the Lord for that. And I'll also fill out the registration form as well. And at this time now, let's take this moment to um, give our past week to our Lord in a quiet prayer. And then we'll turn to Psalm 33 in the front of your hymnal. And we'll read the first 12 verses of Psalm 33 to begin our worship. Let's give our past week, our lives to our Lord this morning. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, as we dive into your word this morning about all kinds of plans that we have for our earthly life. Lord, let us give those plans to you. And you take them and you mold them the way you would like us to enjoy the life you called us to live and then to share your love with others. Guide us in your word, in your precious name. Amen. Blessings, plannings today. That's our, our focus today. And so um, time to plan. And um, something that some of you enjoy planning, other of you, like me, we don't always enjoy um, getting out the calendar and looking at what's going on. And so there's always the, um, the, the statement saying, if you want to make God laugh, what do you tell him? Tell him your plans, right? Because um, <laughs> our, our plans are going to be different from his plans. Our plans, you know, we're very focused on our earthly life. And so today, we're going to take a look at the Proverbs of planning. And let me just share you the story about a young man approached the foreman of a logging crew and asked for a job. That depends, replied the foreman. Let's see you fill this tree, meaning cut this tree. The young man stepped forward, skillfully fell the great tree. Impress, the foreman exclaimed. Start Monday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday rolled by. Thursday afternoon, the foreman approached the young man and says, You can pick up your paycheck on the way out today. Startled, he replied. I thought you paid on Friday. Normally we do, answered the foreman. But we're letting you go today because you've fallen behind. Our daily felling charts shows that you've dropped from first place on Monday to last on Wednesday. But I'm a hard worker, the young man objected. I arrive first, leave last, and even have worked through my coffee breaks. The foreman sensed the boy's integrity, thought for a moment, and then asked, Have you been sharpening your axe? The young man replied, No. I've been working so hard, I have forgotten to take the time. And this is our challenge today as we see an incredible wealth of Proverbs about planning. Natasha did well as the first couple of those Proverbs were talking about, it's easy for us to plan evil <laughs> instead of good. Our minds go crazy about when someone does something wrong to us, we start our minds are just detailed facts of what they've done to us and what we hope might happen to them. As Proverbs 3, do not plot harm against your neighbor. Proverbs 12, the plans of the righteous are just, the advice of the wicked are deceitful. Proverbs 12, a man is praised according to his wisdom, but the man with a warped or twisted mind, and I think we all have twisted minds from time to time, Better to be a nobody and yet have a servant than to pretend to be somebody and to have no food. Planning is so important. 
In fact, verse 10 kind of tells you how people take care of animals. In the next three pictures, you'll see people taking care of animals. It says, the righteous man cares for the need of his animals, but the kindest act of the wicked are cruel. As God calls us to do some amazing things, is that to seek his wisdom and encouragement. The list goes on, a variety of righteousness. I go to Proverbs 15. We weep what we sow. Proverbs 15, 21 says, Folly delights a man who lacks judgment of a man of understanding keeps a straight course. Plans fail for the lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. So often in our planning, we like to do it alone. But we don't see the blind spots. It's kind of like as we're driving, thank the Lord for our spouses. <laughs> that sometimes have to raise their voices, our children, to say, we miss that car coming right next to us. And so this whole planning is so important. Proverbs 16, says, The lot is cast into a lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. Casting lots we see throughout the Old Testament from Jonah on the, on, on the ship to also to... Um, do we see to the act the disciples replacing when Judas passed away? They cast lots. But before they did that, they prayed. And so this is what God calls us to do in Proverbs 19, 21. Many are the plans in the minds of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Very important is that we always seek God's grace and love and His will. Proverbs 20, 18. Plans are established by counsel, by wise guidance, they can rage war. So important that God calls in Proverbs is always seek counsel. Um, he says in Luke 14, he talks about this. For which of you, Jesus says, declares desire to build a tower, but does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he lays a foundation, is not able to finish, all who sees it begins to mock him, saying, this man begin to build, but was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to encounter another king in war, will sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet one who comes against him with 20,000? If not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends his delegation and asks for terms of peace. Plans are important. Proverbs 21, 4, 5. The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who hastily comes only to poverty. Haste makes what? Waste, yeah. And so this is the challenge we have today. 30 to 31 in Proverbs 21 says, No wisdom, no understanding, no counsel can avail against the Lord. The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but the victory belongs to the Lord. How many times have we made plans against the Lord and it never works? We see that with, with Joseph's brothers in, in the New Testament. Let's sell him. Let's get Joseph out of the way. Pharaoh in Egypt went against the Lord. All the way to the Roman Empire in the New Testament. All the way to our worldly philosophers that try to put down the Bible or communists that try to ban the Bible. God's plan always prevails. And so this is our challenge today is our sins, is that we pursue worthless plans. I want to share four stories with you, and you'll see pictures here. Uh, first, you have Jesus cleansing the temple. Boy, they had great plans. Hey, we're going to have hundreds of people in, in the Passover. Let's make some more money. But their hearts was not God's hearts. And that's why you see Jesus cleansing the temple. Or the next one, this video you're going to see about the one who hears God's word, but not does not put it Put him to action like a man who builds a house on the ground without foundation. When the stream broke against, immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Many times that we have not seen God's plan and his encouragement. Or the next picture in Luke 12 talks about a rich man who had all this thing he decided, I'm gonna build, I'm gonna build more storage. He says, What shall I do? I have nowhere to store my crops, he says. I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grains and my goods. And I'll say to my soul, Soul, you have ample good lay up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. So often, we become hoarders 
of all our plans, all our stuff, that's not God's plans. This is nobody's house, so I just want to let you know. All right, none of our houses. So the <laughs> there is a movie by the great um, that the great James Stewart um, played in called Shenandoah, and there he plays a Virginia farmer. And during the Civil War, he begins every mill with the same prayer: "Lord, I planted the seeds, I plowed the ground, I've gathered in the harvest. If I hadn't put the food on the table, it wouldn't be here." But we thank you anyway. How proudful we become that this is my game plan of life. This is what I want to do. And this is the challenge of being prideful or the other way with our plans, we stress out and worry. Matthew 6 talks about, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, nor about your body, what you'll put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow or weep nor gather into the barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you more, aren't you not, are you not more valuable than they are? So there's two sides of planning. One, we're prideful, this is what I'm going to do, or we're scared to death about the future. And God calls us to rely on Him. There's a, the great Baptist minister in London in the 19th centuries, um, the late 1800s, he said this, Charles Spurgeon. He was getting worried about his ministry in the city of London and if there was any necessary resources to maintain his ministry. He became greatly distressed and filled with anxiety. Then God filled his mind with the image that made his anxieties and worries so insignificant. God gave him the image of a mouse in a large gray bend of Egypt under the leadership of Joseph. Remember, Joseph stored seven years of grain. Can you imagine being a, a mouse in that storage for seven great years? The mouse was worried about having, having enough to eat. Then Spurgeon's mind came about the image of a fish in the great river in London. How the fish worried about having enough for water to breathe and survive. As the image sank deep inside Spurgeon, he began to laugh and says, Eat away, little mouse. Swim away, little fish. God will provide all we need and more. And then he dressed himself. Stop worrying, little man. God has enough and more. And that's where we turn to Jeremiah 29, as Dan did a great job, is that God knows he has great plans for us. He says in 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 that, as we Natasha read so well, is that they were sent 70 years in Babylon, the exile. Then God came and brought them back. And he says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you future and a, a future and a hope. So where do we go from here? Where do we go? In Proverbs 16, 1 to 4, I like to finish today. Verse 1 says, To man belongs the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the reply of the tongue. Who is more important in your life today? If it's not God, God calls us, let God be your number one important person, and every relationship will fall through, and He will put on your words, your tongue, of the action plan He wants you to do. And verse 2 says, All a man's way seems innocent to him, but the motives are weighed down by the Lord. We all think we're pretty good in this bad world. But what about our motives? God knows in our hearts. He knows our stresses and our pridefulness. Only God. We justify anything we do out there. But God knows deep down what we need. And so number first three says, Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Houston Taylor says this. defines conviction about how God work should be done. We can make our best plans and try to carry them out in our own strength. Or we can make careful plans and ask God to bless them. Yet another way of working it is to begin with God and to ask His plans and to offer ourselves to Him to carry out His purposes. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane did what? Sweating blood. Lord, not my will but your will be done. I'd like to finish with the story in a book called A Practical Guide to Prayer. Dorothy Haskin tells about a noted concert violinist 
who was asked the secret of mastering the instrument of the violin. The woman asked the question with two words. My secret is plan neglect. What? She explained. There are many things that used to, de to demand my time. When I went to my room after breakfast, I'd make my bed, straighten the room, dust, do whatever seems necessary. And when I finished my earthly task, then I would pick up the violin. That's his system prevented me from accomplishing what I should do on the violin. So I reverse the things. I deliberately plan to neglect everything else until my practice period was complete. And that program, a plan neglect, is the secret of my success. James says this, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we'll go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanish. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord's will, we'll live and do this and that. As we look at our calendar this, this week, as you sit down with your family, let's begin with prayer. Lord, your will be done this week as you guide me so I can be able to be an instrument for you in this community. Let's begin our planning with our Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I'll bring